Hey everyone, before we get into the main topic, I just want to take a minute or two to quickly work on some memory management and some resource management. Rather than me trying to explain what's going on, let's just run it so I can show you. So if we run the application and we go to Window, and we go to General, and we go to Scene, we get a duplicate of the scene and we can freely move around the camera. So there's the leading edge that's instantiating. And there's the running dude, the camera following him. But the problem is all this. You have an ever-increasing amount of objects that are taking up resources, taking up memory, taking up processing. And so this just gets worse and worse and worse the further he's running. So the key is we really want these to auto-delete once he's past them. And that's actually fairly easy to do. So how do we do that? Well, we need to have two bits of data. We need to know what his Z position is, because remember, all we're doing is we're instantiating the tracks out along the Z axis. So once he's passed it, then we can have this auto delete. So we need to know what the position of the tile is at compared to his position. And if the distance is great enough, because you want to leave a little bit of a buffer there. But if the distance is great enough, then just auto delete. So first thing we need to do, let's right click, create. C sharp, and we'll call this cleanup. Let's open that up. But we actually need the running dude script first. So if we come here to running dude, we're going to create a public static, and it needs to be static so is that it's accessible throughout the application. Public static vector three because we're going to be sorry this should be vector three. There we go. We're, it's going to be a vector three because we need to track his z position, and we'll just call this dude pos. So the dude's position in the update section because we want this to be updated with every frame because we want to know where he is right now. So dude POS is equal to transform dot position. Remember, if there's nothing preceding transform dot position, then transform dot position is returning the location of the object the script is attached to. This script is attached to the dude. So it's his position. Now let's go back to cleanup. We can get rid of the two remark statements because, again, remark statements are not executed. They're for internal documentation only. And we don't want this to happen in the start section. We want this to be checked every frame. So if transform dot position, oops, sorry, dot Z. And here, since there's nothing before transform dot position, transform.position here is now referring to the position of the object that this script is attached to, which is going to be the tile. We haven't actually attached it yet. So if the Z position of the tile is less than the Z position of the dude, and we have to say where that variable is, it's in the running dude script. But we don't want to accidentally have something delete that's on the that's still viewable to the camera. So we're not just going to say if it's less than the Z position of the dude, we're going to minus a few from it. So let's do six. And the reason for six is because we said that a single tile is three deep, so it will be two tiles deep. And now we'll just do destroy game object. So if the Z position of the tile or whatever the script is attached to is less than the Z position of the dude minus six, then we want to delete this. And now we'll click on tile and We'll put the cleanup script onto the tile. So we'll put it onto the prefab. 
it'll automatically affect these since these are instances of the prefab. You can see the script is there. Let's go ahead and run it. Now if we go to Window, General, Scene, there we go. It's deleting behind him. So just like that, we're cleaning up after ourselves. So like I said, that wasn't meant to be a long topic. I just wanted to take care of that before we get any further. Sometimes I'm negligent when I'm talking about the kind of cleanup we need to do. Okay, so on to the main topic. We are going to add a ramp for the character to run up. And that in the final version, after the ramp, there will be like a train car that he can run along the top of or whatever. So what we want to do, let's just create a basic ramp, game object, 3D object, cube. We'll set this to position 0, 0, 0, just so we can get a good look at it. We will make this three blocks high. Again, we're trying to stay consistent with the sizing of these objects based on the fact that they're moving one block per second. Well, actually, he's moving, excuse me, one tile per second um, because he's moving a velocity of three. So that'd be, that would be three blocks per second. So one tile per second, sorry. So three. And it will be, we can shrink the X in so there's no accidental collisions from the side. We can make this thinner since it's just meant to be like a plank. And now we can just rotate that. Let's rotate that 45 degrees. And this is going to be like 1.2 or 1.3 to make it even with the ground. That's good. Let's slide that over. And let's put it Z position like 9 or something so we have a chance to get to it. 8. That's not going to be its permanent position. We're just testing. Okay. So what we need to do, we're going to tag this object with a new tag and what we're going to do we're going to check for a collision with an object with that tag so if you come up here and you click on tag i was already doing some testing so you won't have it but you're going to want to click on add tag and then create a tag called ramp and then you come back here and you select it so this now has a tag of ramp when you create a 3D object in Unity using the pre-made objects, it already has a collider. So we don't have to add a box collider, but we will set it to be a trigger. Now we just need to say if the player collides with that trigger, have them run up the ramp. This is key. By putting it at a 45 degree angle, we know what that ratio is. And that is the vertical and the horizontal should be the same. We already know that he's running three squares per second forward. That means he would need to go up three squares per second to maintain that 45 degree angle. So in other words, X of zero, Y of three, Z of three. Again, it, it, it's great to not have to do any complex math, math with this. Okay, so we will go to our running dude script and in the trigger section right here. It's just another if. If other dot tag equals equals and it was ramp. We want something to happen. Well, we want to get component rigid body velocity equals new vector three. We said we don't want him to be moving X, so that would be 0. For Y, we said it needs to be 3, and they're ever moving 3 forward. Okay, if I haven't forgotten anything, what will happen is when we reach the ramp, we'll run up the ramp, but we'll keep going because nothing sets the vertical back to 0. 
But again, like I said, this is an iterative process. We're just testing one thing at a time. It worked, but it actually looks like he is... Can't tell if it's because he's got this white backpack, but it kind of looked like he was traveling through the board, even though it's at the 45 degree angle. Sorry, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to do that for this. Put that aside. Now we should be able to tell. That looks okay. I think his feet go through it a little. I think his feet go through it a little bit because of the animation cycle, but it's not that bad. It's probably passable. Also, it's very... Where you have such a stark color contrast where he's close to black and this is white... So once you have more colors in here, even if there's a little bit of overlap, not a big deal. You can always tweak it slightly too. Okay, so that is functionally working. Now what we want to do, we want to say once you've exited the trigger, go back to 0, 0, 003. So that means we need a new section. So on, on trigger exit. And just rinse and repeat, you're seeing what the trigger, the tag is of the object that you've just exited from. So if it's ramp, then it's 0, 0, 003. There we go. It looks silly because there's nothing under him, but now. You could just add a car, you know, a train car, that kind of thing. So you probably notice this new object here. So that's the train, as you can tell by the name. We'll just drag that into the scene. And... There we go. What we'll do, we'll rotate this. So this needs to rotate 180. So it looks like we need to do that on Y. And this really kind of shows that the, the uh, sizing is a little bit off because that would be a really tiny train. But I suppose we can make this like a double decker. So again, we're going to make it a little bit less. So even though this is one block wide exactly, we don't want there to be any accidental collisions. We want to make sure that if there's a collision, it's because the player intentionally tried to change lanes. So we'll shrink this in a bit. So let's... I'm going to get rid of... In this case, I'm going to get rid of the empty parent here so we're going to right click gonna unpack prefab so sometimes it helps sometimes it doesn't this case it really doesn't help so what we're going to do we're going to shrink this so scale point eight slide that over and its position should be negative one again we're sticking with those integers so one zero negative one Everything should be based on that. Now we're gonna push this back and we're gonna make it taller. And again, it'll make it look silly. So scale two. Point. That's good enough. Again, it's about the functionality, not the actual graphics that I'm showing you. 
Now, there's no collision going on with this yet because we're not using gravity or anything like that. So no collision is occurring. It's purely based on velocity. And just like that, makes it look like you're running on top of the train. So the last thing we want, or should I say the next thing, we want that once you reach the end here, you'll drop off automatically. So what we can do is we can just add an empty trigger object there. So when you zoom up really close, you can see that this doesn't sit nice and flush. But again, it's about the functionality, not the actual models I'm using. So game object, let's create an empty. We'll put it at 0, 0, and then let's see, like negative 7. We'll add a physics and box collider. Where is it? Oh, way back there. Ow. At positive seven, not negative seven. For some reason, the scrolling gets a little bit iffy, depending on what object you have selected, and I don't understand why. Because it's Unity. So let's put this at actually negative one, because that's where we want it to be anyways. It should be like about two vertically. There we go. And we'll just get that. And if it doesn't start scrolling better, I'll just restart Unity. So game object, and we'll just slide that over. Doesn't need to be quite that wide. Basically, you want to position it so as soon as he steps forward into an open space, he drops down. And we'll make this. Thinking that we could do the exit approach as well and that when he exits this then that will be the the proper level for him to be at rather than trying to time the drop that might be the way to go all right so sorry that the scrolling is not cooperating so this should be a trigger bring that base up a little bit bring this in a little bit so what's going to happen is you're going to do on trigger enter and then we're going to give it a negative y velocity. So just as we gave it a positive y velocity, we'll give it a negative y velocity. So it drops down. And when he exits from this trigger, he'll just be zero y velocity. And I think that should work. So we just need to code it now. Actually, we need to tag it. So we'll go to... So with the empty trigger object we'll just do add tag and plus and we'll just call this drop down and then we click back on in it and we choose drop down so we go to our dude's script So on trigger enter, so we're just checking for a new tag. So if other dot tag equals equals We said it was drop down. So if we enter the drop down, then we want velocity 
to become negative, so basically the opposite of the ramp. So again, copying this partially out of laziness and partially out of reinforcing the fact that we're just reversing what we did there. And when we exit, so if other dot tag equals equals drop down technically you could combine these into one you could say ramp or drop down because you're having the same result but you know these early stages I'm not worried, worried about optimization I'm worried about clarity that you understand what's going on Okay, if I did not forget anything, that should do it. Okay, so he's not quite low enough. So since we're using the exit, what we do is we just make the collider longer. Or you could do the math and time it. Actually, you know something? I don't think it's just I don't think it's just the bottom here. I think it's because he's dropping diagonally. He might have exited out this direction. So we will have to extend this out. And again, it's just trial and error. There we go. Don't know if he's at the exact right location. We could always check the Z position, but uh, excuse me, my apologies, the Y position, the uh, the Z position is ever changing. It's the Y position we'd want to check, but I've not seen any problem with collisions, but we could always do that. It does look like his feet are above it slightly. So you would just, what you would do is you would just You would just thumbnail this until you get the exact result that you want. Yeah. Good enough for this demonstration. Again, it's the basic principle. So entering the trigger makes them drop, exiting the trigger makes them stop. Okay, so I think that should do it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, any requests, please put it into the comments field. I'll do my best to try to answer them. I think that there's probably only going to be a couple more videos to this series because we've really handled all the big functionality. We have the endless instantiated spawned environment. We have randomly generated, randomly positioned obstacles. The coins to pick up, you now have ramps and objects that you can run along. There's a couple more things you'd want to do, like this needs a collider and you have to check to see if you ran into the side of this, things like that. Um, but as, as far as the major functionality, it's, it's almost done. And actually running into this is the same functionality as running into the crate. You're just checking yet another tag, you would just give this a tag. And then decide, is that like an instant fail or do you, you know, do you get bumped off of it? You know, again, that's game balance. I think in, in Subway Surfers, if you sideswiped an object, it would bounce you back into the lane, but you would be briefly slowed. And if you bumped into, uh, if you sideswipe a second object when you're slowed, then you would lose. Whereas if you hit something head on, it would be an instant loss. So depending on how you hit an object, depended if it was an instant loss or you're kind of slowed, there's a debuff, but you can recover. That's all game balance. That's all, you know, what you decide to do with your project. So I think that maybe after the fact, I might tweak this because this does look kind of silly. 
but again, it's all about the design. It's all about the coding. It's all about making this work and not how pretty this particular project is. That's never been my intent because me using do, uh, good graphics does not help you in the least. You need to know how to do the coding because you're going to either draw your own graphics or you're going to commission someone or you're going to, you know, buy them from an asset store. You know, whatever your operational decisions are, those are yours. So again, I hope you found this helpful. Let me know if there's anything you want to see and please enjoy the rest of your day.